Goldman Sachs gets even gloomier on the U.S. economy, CNN. Goldman Sachs is becoming increasingly pessimistic about the U.S. economy as coronavirus support from the government phases out and consumer spending remains on an uncertain path. Over the weekend, the Wall Street Bank downgraded its forecast for America's economic growth, which is closely monitored by the investment community. Goldman Sachs now expects the economy to expand 5.6% this year compared to a previous 5.7% estimate in 2022. Uh, 5.7%. In 2022, growth is projected to expand 4%, down from 44 It is the second time Goldman Sachs has revised its 2021 forecast lower in two months. Goldman Sachs also thinks spending could decline as people could continue to work from home, encouraging them to prepare their own lunches instead of popping into a local restaurant. So that's Goldman, okay? <laughs> that's what Goldman, no, you're laughing. You have a comment? You have thoughts? I, yeah, I just, it's so obvious this. And even it's coming from CNN, but this is, this is how media works, the headline. Like if you actually look at the numbers, you want to talk persona versus policy? Goldman Sachs predicts an even gloomier look on the outcome. Goldman Sachs has predicted 56 down from 5.7. Oh, my God. 0.1%. I agree. It's not a big number. We, what are we talking but, but, but about here? Here's the question. Dude. Yeah. It w- your point would make sense if it said Fox News instead of CNN. Mm. Why is CNN telling this story? Headlines. No, I, that, again, I don't I'm agree. not even worried about CNN. I don't agree. 5.7 5. 5. was gloomy it, 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 down from the 6.2. Yeah. So now it's 5.6 from 6.2. Yeah. So well, f- this, uh, this article 4. says 4.4% to 4%. That's 10%. That's a real number. Mm-hmm. So that part's a real number. It's like 11% you're talking about. With a number like that. So, look, they're not optimistic about the economy. So what happens if the economy takes a hit the next 12, 18, 24 months? Does mid-years take a massive hit for the left? Midterms. Midterms. Oh, I, I don't think there. I give the probably 80% chance Republicans take control of the House or win the midterms, for sure. I mean, that's that's not even the current climate. That's just politics in general. The the party that's not in power takes over the, in the midterms. That's... I mean, you probably have a very clear example of this, but I think Republicans will take over in the midterms. Do yeah, you not? Yeah. Uh, well, look, man. Who knows? The um, there's so much there's so much redlining. There's so much gerrymandering. There, there's there's so much happening behind the scenes that I don't I don't want to get too in depth on people. But I mean, look, twenty. We talk about uh, we talk about the um, what was a recall election in California. We talked about that a lot, right? Something that we didn't really discuss in depth was the demographics of the voters in that, right? 25%, 25%, a full quarter of the voters uh, were from citizens, naturalized citizens born outside the country. So, you know, what's happening at the southern border, what's happening across, you know, red states, what's happening in these environments that uh, people are leaving, right, to like, where are your swing states? Where, where are your swing states? Where are your swing uh, demographics? There's nobody, regardless of anything or any policies, anything that the Biden administration can do, there's no Republican or Libertarian or Independent that's ever going to win. Really ever again, probably in my lifetime, in New Jersey, in New York, in Michigan. Mm-hmm. In, yep. I mean, they, Michigan, they've gotten. Maybe you know, Michigan. They, it's going to be very, but very why difficult. why is that? What's the cause of that? Because at the end of the day, everyone gets one vote. Political strategy. So one of the reasons, again, th- these people are not stupid, right? The people running these places are not stupid. Phil Murphy, let's just use Jersey for an example. This Don't guy, say that name, This Gerard. guy, yeah, I know. Don't say that he, name, Gerard. He knows exactly what he's doing. He knows that people are leaving his state, all right? Yeah. He knows five years in a row New Jersey has left, has, has led the nation in people leaving his state. This literally his population is telling him, I would rather live anywhere else but with you. That should be, in, in a normal governing environment, that should be a massive red flag that our policies aren't working. Instead, mm-hmm. the policies are working to their end, where they have nothing but their voters left. So in these places, a lot of precedent that we had before, people couldn't pick up and leave during the Oregon Trail times. You know, just because they didn't like Herbert Humphrey, they weren't hopping on a, on a you know, horse and buggy and, and ha- hightailing it 3,000 miles south. Now you can. So a lot, of, a lot of what's happening now in politics, a lot of what's happening behind the scenes, you can't look at past analytics. They're not predictive at this point. Right. They, the Democratic Party specifically has done two things. They are a big tent party. They, they are the party of yes and juxtapose themselves against Republicans, which are the party of no. OK, we, we, anything you want. Yes, absolutely. Seventy five genders. Of course, there are the Come gas on in. and the brakes. Right? analogy. Yeah. They're the party of yes. OK. And what they do is once they have control, they squeeze out all opposition. Small business. Get the F out. Don't want you. You small business owners, 
You guys are gone. You guys are our opposition. Independent voters, gone. Get out of here. I want a constituency of nothing but union members, teachers, cops, and that's it. All right. I want I want there to be three shops. I want Amazon in every freaking corner. That's that's their strategy. Well, I think small small business owners got to stop bitching. Is what they got to do. They got to figure it out. I think small business owners, if they can't pay the minimum wage, you know, to people, they got to pay them higher. I hey think, man, you know, you got to compete. <laughs> so if you enjoyed this little short segment from the podcast that we did, here's another short segment to watch. Or if you want to see the entire podcast, click over here. Take care, everybody. Bye bye.